you're looking at one of the only digital non-Leica M-mount cameras ever released. Oh, and it does this too. There are only a couple other digital non-Leica M-mount cameras ever made, and you may have never heard of any of them. The Epson RD-1 with its 6 megapixel sensor and cool analog touches, and there's even a USB-C charging Android-looking Pixie rangefinder released recently. In the middle of these two, and maybe even more strange and equally special, is the Ricoh GXR A12 M-mount module. Welcome back to the Snap Innis YouTube channel where I like to photograph with old cameras. This is the Ricoh GXR A12 M mount module. And it's the third module we'll be looking at in my Ricoh GXR series and by far the most interesting in my opinion. If you need a refresher on the Ricoh GXR, it's a camera that you can take apart with modules that contain their own sensors, processors, shutter, and lens. This mount has no lens, but the sensor and technology in the module is just as exciting as the mount. Before I get into what makes this camera module neat, why did Ricoh even choose the M mount in the first place? Well, I researched this and I didn't find a clear answer, but I do have some suspicions. For one, Leica M lenses are highly regarded and used by many of Ricoh's target audience anyway. They are also usually compact, making it a good fit for a compact camera, but it was probably for more of a practical reason. Like apparently the patent for the old M mount expired, allowing reuse. And that combined with the availability of mirrorless lens mount options in 2011 may be the reason. In any case, using the M mount module allows you to adapt many different lenses as the flange distance is relatively short. It's short enough for most SLR lenses at least that you may be interested in trying. For example, I have this adapter to use Pentax K mount lenses or M42 lenses opening a huge door of inexpensive and fantastic vintage glass. I've even gotten experimental with adapting Pentax 110 lenses. These are some hilariously small lenses built for tiny 110 format film, but they do cover an APS-C frame with a little bit of vignetting. I noticed the flange distance difference was only a negative 0.8 millimeters. So I gave it a shot and I designed this 3D printed mount that has a recess allowing the lens to go inside the mount to achieve affinity focus. It only took several tries to get it to work. By the way, because many of you seem interested in my custom adapters, I put the link to this model in the description, of course for free. Have at it, just don't blame me if something breaks. And as hilarious as Pentax 110 lenses look, they actually pack quite a punch. They are incredibly sharp, especially since they don't have adjustable apertures, leaving them wide open at f2.8 all the time. Speaking of sharpness, that brings me back to the module. The Ricoh GXR A12 M mount module has no AA filter, and that was a bold move in the year it was released. At the time, almost all digital cameras had AA filters, and not having one provided a visible sharpness advantage. In addition to the attention to image quality, Ricoh also geared this module towards M-mount shooters with an early implementation of focus peaking. The module gives you two options for this, a traditional highlighting of in-focus edges in white, and then a black and white mode that emphasizes edges. I found the first color mode to work great and the second to be a little weird. I have no idea how anybody would compose a shot with this. And then it's a little bit hard to use in a camera without a viewfinder. Ricoh did make an electronic viewfinder accessory for this camera, but it's difficult to find today and is very cost prohibitive. It works really similar to this Micro Four Thirds viewfinder that I use on my Panasonic cameras. And it even rotates the same way to 90 degrees to allow top level shooting. It seems like a must have for serious users of the M-mount module, but I still got along okay with the rear screen the best I could. I'd like to pick one of these up one day. Actually using the camera is similar to using a compact Micro Four Thirds body in terms of the size and handling. 
but I give the Ricoh GXR extra points here for its wonderful controls and settings, which I feel are really geared towards serious photographers. Not knocking on my Micro Four Thirds cameras, I love you guys too. The sensor is a 12 megapixel CMOS sensor, and as I mentioned, it is without an AA filter. It produces beautiful images, and I feel like it holds its own today very well. The quality of the images makes you forget its relatively old age, but if you try to push the files too much in post-production, you'll quickly remember that this module is old. High ISO performance is also not great, but like many of these older cameras, the grain actually looks quite nice in black and white photographs. So that's always an option. Overall, the Ricoh GXR represents a unique opportunity to use in-mount lenses on a digital body without an adapter. It's one of the only cameras made to do so, by far the cheapest, and then offers the opportunity to swap modules to something totally different if you so feel inclined. It has impressive image quality, great controls, and who could overlook the cool factor? That's gotta count for something. Thanks for watching. As always, go out there and shoot with whatever camera you have right now, make beautiful images, have fun, and until next time, happy snapping.